So let's look at Revelation chapter 6. Now this is very interesting. Verse 1, And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard as it were the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. Now who's the first horseman? And I saw and behold a white horse, and he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him, and he went forth conquering and to conquer. You all know who that horseman is, right? That's not Jesus Christ. Who is he? The Antichrist. So we see at Revelation chapter 1, uh, chapter 6, excuse me, verse 1 through 2. All right, you're all going to laugh at this, but who cares, all right? So then he's riding on a horse, right? So he's riding on a horse right here. And this uh, being, this figure right here, who's riding on this horse. Okay, I don't know if I'm drawing that name right. You know, the ear. No, ba -ba -ba. There we go. You know, not that bad, right? Not that bad. Yeah, it came out all right. It came out all right. Yeah, it came out all right. Yeah. Yeah, just... Yeah, yeah, there we go. All those details, right? All those details. All right, so then here, here, comes, here comes this Antichrist figure. <laughs> probably, probably. But here's this Antichrist, and then he's riding on this horse. And it's a white horse, you notice. But you'll notice what the Bible says is that... Yeah, I'm just writing in so detailed right here. So he had a crown on his head, right? The Bible says that he had a crown on his head, right? Oh, no. uh, <laughs> Y'all can guess what that is, all right? The Bible says that he had a crown on his head. Now, that's a different teaching that you're just going to have to look up, but I really believe this. The Bible says that uh, the Pope will be the Antichrist. I really believe in that. Now, I don't believe that it's going to be like a current Pope today. I believe it's going to be uh, a mixture of a... Black Pope and a white Pope. I really see that. It's going to have to be totally a unique kind of Pope that will be appropriate as a world leader. The Protestant Reformation, they got it right. This guy was the Antichrist. They kept calling the Pope the Antichrist. Today, we don't see him that way because he's not a one world uh, ruler anymore. But all you have to do is switch the, switch the role, switch the power, get, gain more control. And then have a Jesuit leader, that's also called the Black Pope, I bet you you didn't know that. How many people know Rothschild, the elites, but how many of you know the name of the Jesuit leader? Mm, that's a conspiracy to think about, right? But anyway, so we got a Jesuit leader, the Black Pope, and then we got the White Pope, which is the current Pope today. I believe that these are going to somehow combine to some kind of unique Pope out there. But anyways, aside from that fact, the Bible says a key thing right here. He, the Bible says he had a bow, right? He had a bow. Now, the thing is this, is that what this bow represents is that he does not have arrows with him. Yeah. It's just a bow. Why is that? It's to show that he conquers, but he does it in peace. And the Bible shows that at Daniel chapter 11, that he comes in peaceably. So he's conquering, but he has no arrow. However, I believe that there is a double application here. I believe that there's another meaning here. Y'all yeah. can guess what I'm about to say. I believe that this bow yeah. represents a rainbow as well. You know why? He's going to truly imitate Jesus Christ coming in on his own white horse when he conquers the world. Okay, what's, what's, what's my first point of proof? My first point of proof is this. Because people already messed up Revelation 6 verse 1 through 2. Do you know how many people think Revelation chapter 6, verse 1 through 2 is Jesus Christ? A lot of people think that this is referring to Jesus Christ. A lot of the people in the world think. Do you know how many people think that Revelation 6, verse 1 through 2 is not the Antichrist, but Jesus Christ? That's point number one right there. That he's going to definitely imitate Jesus Christ, and people will think this is Jesus Christ. But here's another thing, which is very interesting. We're going to look with Scripture with Scripture. Amen? All right, so you just made that up, Pastor. No, just see what the Bible mentions about Bo the first time. Let's look at Genesis chapter 9. Genesis chapter 9. And I want you to go to Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. All you have to do is look up the word bow in your Bible. That's it. And then you'll notice right here that a bow 
The word bow, it can refer to the rainbow. That is a possibility. Why? Because one, that's English dictionary. Two, the Bible shows it. Look at Genesis chapter 9. And then we will read verse 12. And God said, This is the token of the covenant which I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for perpetual generations. I do set my what? Bow, Bow in the cloud. And it shall be a token of a covenant between me and the earth. Uh, so because your Bible says so. Here's another interesting thing if you don't know. Look at Genesis chapter 27. Genesis chapter 27. And then we'll look at verse 3, Genesis chapter 27. We'll read at verse 3. Okay, so we also know because it's very interesting how this definition is supported right here by Scripture with Scripture. Scripture with Scripture. Not only that, we also saw English dictionaries. Just look up the English word. But if you want to play Greek and Hebrew, this is very interesting, Hebrew and Greek. By the way, in your New Testament, that word bow as a weapon in your New Testament, not found anywhere in the Bible in the New Testament, except if it is Revelation 6, 1 through 2. Think about that for a moment. But isn't it interesting that two chapters behind it, God does mention about the rainbow. So it's something that you've got to give a possibility of that it can be referring to a rainbow right here. Because the author never mentioned throughout the whole, uh, in, throughout his whole book, as well as the entire New Testament, the entire New Testament, there's no mention of a bow as a weapon. Hmm. How about that? By the way, this, uh, you want to play Greek? That Greek word is not found anywhere. Not found anywhere except Revelation 6. You want another interesting one right there? Let's play Hebrew. That word bow at Genesis 9, I do set my bow on a cloud. That same Hebrew word is found at Genesis chapter 27, verse 3. Now therefore take, I pray thee, thy weapons, thy quiver, and thy bow, and go out to the field and take me some venison. See that weapon bow has the same Hebrew word as Genesis 9 with the rainbow. Oh, wow. But didn't English dictionary show that too? It shows a double meaning anyway with the word bow. It can mean a rainbow or it can mean uh, a bow that you use for an arrow, a weapon. See, it shows double meaning already right here. Isn't that interesting? So we're, doing Eng we're uh, tracing English etymology, Hebrew and Greek, as well as scripture with scripture. So when we combine all these evidence together, there's a very strong chance that he could be holding a rainbow. But here's another interesting thing. Go to Revelation 19. Revelation 19. And then I want you to go to uh, Revelation 19. And then I want you to turn to Ezekiel chapter 1. Ezekiel chapter 1. Look at Revelation 19 and Ezekiel chapter 1. Now remember, the Antichrist must imitate Jesus Christ. Amen? Yeah, he must imitate Jesus Christ. So he's going to try to imitate the Lord Jesus Christ. Now our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you've got to understand this, is that when he comes down at Armageddon, when you look at Revelation 19, Ezekiel chapter 1, and Matthew chapter 24, which you're eventually going to turn to, this is all imitating Jesus Christ coming down, and I won't ruin it. Let's look at Revelation 19 first, all right? Revelation chapter 19, verse 11. And I saw heaven open, and behold a what? White horse, and he that sat upon him was called Faithful and True. And in righteousness he that judge and make war. Notice Faithful and True is capitalized. This is referring to God Almighty. And you'll notice right here, he's riding on a what? White horse. Revelation 6, 1 through 2, what is he riding on? Check. 
All right, let's go to Ezekiel chapter 1. We'll look at verse Ezekiel chapter 1, and we'll read verse 28. As the appearance of the bow that is in the cloud in the day of rain, so was the appearance of the brightness round about. This was the appearance of the likeness of who? Glory of the Lord. All right, Ezekiel 1 says that this rainbow, which he sees up in the third heaven, remember Revelation chapter 4? There's a rainbow surrounding God's presence, right? So that's what Ezekiel's saying. But this rainbow is representing the glory of God. This is the glory of the Lord. It says this is. Go to Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24. You know what Jesus Christ will do at Armageddon? Look at Matthew chapter 24. Uh, 24, 25, excuse me, chapter 25, 25, verse 31, chapter 25, verse 31. Notice what the Bible says when Jesus Christ comes down on this earth. When the Son of Man shall come in His what? Glory. And all the holy angels with Him. Then shall He sit upon the what? Throne of His what? Glory. Glory. Ooh, wait, what's surrounding the throne? Revelation 4. All right, for this particular video, people won't know. So let's look at Revelation 4. Revelation 4, verse... Revelation chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Revelation chapter 4, verse 3 and 4. Notice, surrounding the throne is the rainbow. Oh. Throne. His rainbow. Not only that, throne of His glory. The Bible shows that He's going to come down in what? His glory. So when Jesus Christ comes down, He's going to hold the colors of the rainbow with Him when He comes down. You don't think the Antichrist, when He comes down, He's going to hold the colors of the rainbow with Him. He's going to bring it down with Him. That's why the LGBTQ community can welcome this Antichrist with open arms. He's going to come with a rainbow. That's why all world nations will unite with him. Because throughout history, a rainbow represented cooperation, unity of different nations. You know what all the Antichrist has to do when he sets up his flag in the White House or in the UN? Set up a humongous rainbow flag that will connect all different religions nations, genders, and sexes. All he has to do is just come down like that as a conqueror. Isn't that what everyone is looking for today? A diversity, a diversity, a leader who understands different cultures, a multicultural perspective, different genders, different backgrounds. He comes in with the colors of the rainbow. That's what I believe is a double application as well. That's how he can come peaceably with a bow. By the way, if you look up that Greek word in Revelation 6, it's, tox, it's toxin, I think. That's close to poison. He comes in with a bow and an invisible poisonous arrow. It's toxic. Wow. 